Hey everybody, this is Ross Johnson from the Sound of Tomorrow Show. You're listening to WAYO 104.3 FM Rochester. Coming up on that Sound of Tomorrow Show that I just mentioned, we are talking about uh, bathing. How you like to do that. We, Heather's got some car hacks for you. We're talking about uh, queer youth climate change, and we've got some hot picks. We've got a full show. We almost certainly won't get to all of it, so knock a few of those things off the list on the Sound of Tomorrow. It's coming up next, but first... Hi, everybody. Yes. Welcome. We're back with more baby talk on The Sound of Babies. Wow. That's right, Baby Bumpers, your weekly show where we talk to you about, what else? Babies. We just love babies. We sure do. Of course, our longtime listeners know that we're bringing a lifetime's worth of experience as we answer your burning baby questions. Like what to do about those burning, rashy baby bottoms? Hmm, that's a good one. You know, Heather, it's such a blessing to be able to talk about our favorite topic, little bundles of joy. Of course, the real blessing is that we've had so many babies of our own. That's right, Heather. We've had so many babies together that I can't even keep track. Silly Ross. Of course you know that we've had five babies. Of course I know that. And of course, they're not babies anymore. And neither are you. Oh, darling. You're not exactly the football player that I married anymore, either. No matter how old I get, and how old and decrepit you get, we'll always share our one true love. Babies. Babies. Oh. Let's go to the phone. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, what the hell is this? Yeah, what's going on? Oh, it sounds like we have a couple. How sweet. You're not Heather and Ross. We're Heather and Ross. Yeah, and we hate babies. Well, I mean, we don't hate babies. Okay, well, I know. I mean, we just don't like them is all. Yeah. Sounds like you two lovebirds have hit some rocky patches. Have you considered couples therapy? And remember, nothing brings a couple together like... <gasps> babies. Babies. Oh. What? Gross! Lovebirds? A couple? (laughs) Double! (laughs) Triple! (laughs) As if I'd ever be a couple with her. Oh my god, gross, right? Hey! I mean, it's not you specifically, it's just, you know, girls. (laughs) Callers, I don't suppose you have a question about babies? Okay, our question is, why are you pretending to be us? Callers, I'm not sure what you mean. We've been the hosts of The Sound of Babies for longer than I'd care to mention. Since she was young, even. And since he could tie his shoes without getting winded, but I love my hubby wubby every bit as much as I did back then. Okay, you know what, actually, can you two just hold on for one second? We're kind of doing a show here. You know, this will not take a minute. I just got to sort something out. Hold on. Hey, Heather. I mean, my Heather, I mean, I just had a thought. Yeah? You haven't been monkeying around with the time tunnel, have you? Um... Heather? It's just that there's the new Masters of the Universe show, and you were going on and on and on about He-Man and She-Ra and how much you loved those cartoons when you were a kid. And I just got so bored with it. I mean, jeepers, it was all Cringer this and Punch Horse that. Okay, for the last time, his name is Swift Wind. Well, anyway, I went back in time and lured you out of the house with cookies when He-Man came on. People apparently thought the middle-aged ladies wandering around with trays of cookies to give to kids were... Just totally fine back then. I'm total rubes, am I right? I know it sounds extreme, but I just really needed you to shut up about Orko. Okay, Heather, you do not know what you have done. You've created a paradox. 
I think I'd know if I created a paradox. Okay, then how do you explain married couple Ross and Heather hosting a radio show about babies? I hardly think that interrupting your He-Man was going to alter the future to such an extent that you'd not be gay. Heather, think about what you were saying. Think about He-Man. Bulging muscles. Leather chest strap. Think about Orko, flitting little twink. Man at arms with his daddy energy and porn mustache. And Shira, who taught me everything I know about female empowerment, which is very important to the gays. And then there's Fisto. Hold up. Are you saying what I think you're saying? That He-Man made you gay? That's not, well, actually, it makes a lot of sense. I've created some kind of sliding doors, what if mirror universe scenario in which you never became gay. Which it's too horrible to even think about. I mean, I got married to you. (laughs) We have kids, we have, which means we, God. Okay, well, it's not that bad. Yeah, not what I've heard. We must have been caught in the temporal feedback bubble, which explains why only we can know about the original timeline. We have to fix this, but but how? There's only one way. Go back in time and make sure that you watch a bunch of He-Mans? Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, I was going to offer to seduce my alternate self and make him gay again, but... Yeah, your way works too, I guess, sure. I mean, there's no reason we can't try both. Sure could be fun yeah let's see why not <laughs> you take a shot i'll take a shot we'll see <laughs> we'll see what works lands. yeah <laughs> hey everybody i'm ross johnson your favorite co-host and i'm heather zykowski the babe with the power welcome back to another sound of tomorrow on waio lp rochester sound of tomorrow that's right that's how it goes that yep. was almost a little they might be giants thank you that was pretty I good. Was, yeah, that's was a not, high compliment from me. I was not trying to accomplish anything at all. It was great, though. Brought a little zip and zest and pop to the show. How are you doing, Heather? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. You want to hear... It's a beautiful, uh, you wanna, sunny day. It is a beautiful, sunny day. It's rather hot outside. My dogs Which are not love. loving it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, no. My dogs don't I love, love it. it. Yeah. My so cat really doesn't... You know, he doesn't go outside. Doesn't care. Doesn't care one little bit. Yeah, he doesn't. I, I saw an interesting statistic that I thought you might enjoy just to kick really? off, love kick off our show here. Um, so this is uh, the the Trevor Project surveyed uh, 34700 I almost said $34,700 because I apparently would like some money. Uh, 34700 uh, LGBTQ plus youth in the US in um, uh, at the end of last year. And... Uh, they learned something interesting. What did they learn? Uh, about one in four uh, queer youth. So, you know, so this is people who identify, you know, anywhere along any kind of queer spectrum uh, that 26 percent said uh, that they uh, don't fall into binary categories of male and female. So they they. They I don't want to say they identify as non-binary necessarily, but they uh, don't identify as binary. So, you know, with the, with a non-binary that can be an identity or it can be, um, you know, that can be a distinct gender identity or it can just, or, or it can be more of an umbrella term, but you know, I thought it was really interesting. I, yeah. I you know, you, you never want to, you never want to do the thing of like, well, we're all a little bisexual. Cause it's uh, that that's sort of minimizing of people who are identifying as bisexual. But I also feel like, in the same way, well, you know, maybe we all are a little bisexual. Um, I feel like in a not in a political identity way, but in a or a, a a sexual or gender identity way, but in a sort of a you know, we've talked about the mm-hmm. all the things that go into gender. Right. Um, and all the th- all the various things that 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 go in sort of different different directions in everybody throughout their body and their life. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So. I think it's I think it's I think it's interesting and sort of cool that there are a lot of LGBTQ. I I mean, in a sense, I guess it doesn't matter to me how many people are non-binary as long as people who are non-binary can 
you know, feel free to express themselves in that way. But I also think it's interesting and nice that there are that many people that are and that many people that maybe recognize that um, about themselves. Because I think it's something that we're going to see more of in the sense of as we're more comfortable talking about it, I think Mm -hmm. more people are going to realize and or feel comfortable, you know, publicly identifying or even privately. I think you're absolutely right. So, yep. Yeah, because it almost seems like the whole binary gender identity was so hammered into people and there was no other alternative at all. Yeah. So anybody, the the explanations I've heard are sometimes along the lines of, and we've seen a lot of this on RuPaul's Drag Race lately, people letting people know like, hey, I, I'm non-binary. But the way I've heard a lot of people in that scenario explain it is, yeah, I never really thought I was a boy, but I never thought I was a girl, but I wasn't sure and I didn't know. Yeah. And I have a sense that maybe even, you know, definitely when we were kids, if someone was having those feelings about like, I don't know, my birth certificate says I'm a boy, but I don't quite feel like one, but maybe I'm not a girl. I think that person would have just kept their mouth shut. Yeah. I think it wouldn't have, wouldn't have been accepted by peers, by family. And that's yeah. not right. And I think it could be, I think it can be a subtle thing too. I mean, I think it's sort of a, I I do think it's a, you know, I think it's a spectrum. So I think you can be, (laughs) I I don't even think it's like a one line spectrum. I mean, I think it's a, (laughs) I think it's a swirly spectrum that goes off in all different directions, but you know, I think it can be, you you know, some, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of right in the middle somehow. (laughs) It can Mm -hmm. also be that you're just a little non, I mean, I don't want to say something. I mean, if somebody's, non-binary they're not binary. i don't want to say like anybody's just a little non-binary but um you know that's sort of minimizing but I, you know it can be a little like i'm you know you feel you know somebody's mostly male <laughs> you know it feels mostly male um in a lot of ways but then you know there there are all sorts of scenarios is what i'm saying <laughs> i realize this i'm mm-hmm. talking I'm yeah there really <laughs> are digging myself into a little are. bit of a hole but <laughs> but the point being, I think it's a, I think it's a big spectrum and I think more people are at more interesting places on it than maybe they even realize themselves. And hopefully yep. we can get to a point where we can, you know, people can express themselves and people can explore their own selves in ways mm-hmm. that, you know, you, you can, you can shut yourself off from that stuff too. You know, you can shut yourself off from, um, you know, you think of the gay people who live their entire lives until they're 80 and then they're like, oh, my God, I've been gay this whole time <laughs> because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because, you know, society gives you plenty of tools to uh, yep. lock yourself away <laughs> and you can lock yourself away even from yourself. So um, I think it's great is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm, absolutely. You go, you go non- non-binary youths and olds That's as right. well. <laughs> and and olds, definitely. Yeah. It's nice to see the young people. You know, doing stuff that I think we wouldn't really have. We would have been allowed, maybe, but it would have been less supported, shall we say? Yeah, this never would have come up when we were kids. I mean, not in a not in like a news article. I mean, you know, it wouldn't have right. been. This would never have come up in a uh, public. There would not have been a radio show <laughs> talking no. about this, you know. Yeah, so it's really it's very nice. Those kids, I don't know. Sometimes I think those kids are kind of okay. I hope so, because, man, (laughs) somebody's going to have to clean up this nonsense. I know. Yeah. And Gen X was too small. There is no way we could do it. And kind of lazy. Like, (laughs) like we sort of. No, that's that's our bad reputation. I don't think it's true. Well, (laughs) I think we were too, like, I think we were too, um, you know. When you're the kids at the back of the gym class, just not wanting to <laughs> play basketball, <laughs> you know, you're 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 only going to get so much done. You might well, be cool, but maybe that was it. We were just way too busy being cool and yeah. taking naps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you're not necessarily going to make things worse, but you're not necessarily yeah. going to make things better. So. Yeah. Um, we were not that we were not the high energy generation, I don't think. No, no, I don't know. Nope. Nah. No. Nah. <laughs> but you know what I think a lot of us still have energy for, Ross? What's that? Showering. All right. There is a new 
a new thing in the news. And I've been aware of this for the past couple weeks, but I didn't know it was actually a thing thing. So I was scrolling through my phone, as one does, and I saw what I thought was clickbait. 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 Delicious. I freaking yeah. love clickbait. I know you do. Um, but I saw this headline that was like, Ashton K Kutcher and Mila Kunis say, don't wash your babies. <laughs> and I was like, I looked at the headline. And I was As like, someone who knows all about babies, you <laughs> immediately. That's the thing. Had... I was like, <laughs> oh, well, I mean, why would I listen to them? Are they pediatric doctors now? Like, I, right. did, did they go to med school? And I, I was unaware of this. I'll admit, I've seen that like Cheetos commercial with them in it, but I haven't kept up on you know, trends in the worlds of Ashton and Amila. So curiosity definitely got the best of me. And I was like, why are they being quoted as like baby raising authorities? So I clicked to the article and I find that it's actually wherever I found this because I didn't look up my source for this. It was an interesting thing that kind of springboarded off what they were saying about like bathing babies and it kind of went into skincare and how to take good care of your skin. And there were all kinds of doctors cited and stuff like that yeah. struck me as pretty balanced and, and even in that article. Okay. But, it turns out, I have this article here from the Daily Beast by Brooklyn Howard entitled, Please, Famous White People, Stop Telling Us You Don't Bathe. Because it turns out there's a lot more that wasn't in that article that I skimmed after hitting that headline of going like, why would I listen to Ashton and Mila about child care? Yeah. Um, I guess there's this new trend that celebrities are now talking about how they don't bathe. Like they're they're bragging about it. It says in the article that the latest culprit is Jake Gyllenhaal, and I did follow up on this interview with Vanity Fair, and he was definitely saying. Um, so I do think there's a whole world of not bathing that's also really helpful for skin maintenance, and we naturally clean ourselves. Um. And there's a little more about Mila and Ashton. And um, Mila only washes her face twice a day. The rest of her is not washed. And okay. um, Ashton says that he washes the crevices and nothing else ever. And with their children, Kutcher says, if you can see the dirt on them, clean them. Otherwise, there's no point. And then in the article, it does point out how actor Kristen Bell came to the couple's defense Tuesday while appearing on The View. And she says her method of parenting is, I'm a big fan of waiting for the stink. Once you catch a whiff, that's biology's way of letting you know you need to clean it up. Yeah, so I, I'm going to... Oh, go ahead. I was, you know, there... It says in this article here, to be fair, there's no exact guideline on how often a person should bathe. However, if they stink, they probably should have already done so. And it mentions that the Cleveland Clinic, a slightly more reputable source for health advice, says once a day is generally recommended, not just to prevent odor, but also to prevent pores from getting clogs, access dry and flaky skin, or to prevent spreading of germs. Yeah, I want to so see... I'll let you go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just so curious about this because it definitely I have read so much about like, don't bathe too often. You'll over dry your skin. There are people with certain skin conditions who can't wash with water for whatever reason. The elderly mm. and the very young sometimes have very, very delicate skin and shouldn't yeah. overwash. So I get some of the idea of this school of thought. But then I'm trying to imagine if I went for a week without actually bathing, I think my skin would feel really bad. Well, I d see, I don't know. And this I'm going to I'm going to so I'll, I, I will preface this by saying, <laughs> I guess I feel like I need to say this as a white celebrity. Um, I, um, I, I, you know, I will I would shower five times a day if I could get away with it. Um, I. And see, you then know, I would I, tell you you're overwashing. You're going to strip out your skin's essential oils. Yeah, I definitely i i love i love a bathing situation. Oh, me so, too. Um, it's Once not, I get in that shower, you can hardly get me out. Sometimes, if 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 the Cleveland Clinic came along and said, "Look, we've got information that showering is really bad for you," I would just be like, "Well, I guess I'm just going to die because <laughs> I'm not giving up my shower." Yeah. So that's me. But 
I don't know. See, so I've seen a lot about this and I've seen a lot of people being like, <laughs> you know, I've seen the like, okay, white people, stop it. I don't know. I mean, I just, I, but part of me is like, I sort of, I guess I don't, I don't know. I feel like it doesn't bother me. Like if, if I'm friends with Ashton Kutcher and Ashton Kutcher stinks, I'm probably not going to hang out with Ashton Kutcher. You know what I mean? Like, but if he wants to stink, I guess that's fine. I don't, I don't know. And I don't know what the, I don't, I don't know what a good, um, bathing for first of all i don't know how you wash the crevices i'm getting i'm getting hung up on some of this some of these details i don't know how you wash the crevices without washing anything else like you think some water would run down somewhere but anyway um that doesn't make sense to me but (laughs) what i'm picturing is some kind of like washcloth situation like a sponge bath yeah yeah and you just like scrub your armpits for example i mean it it seems like it it sounds in a, in a way like one of those trendy sort of Hollywood things of somebody saw an article about like, if you wash too much, it can, you know, hurt your skin and blah, blah, blah. But I do think I all, you know, the flip side of that is I think we probably don't need to bathe once a day. Um, we use a lot of, for any kind of I, I don't think there's. I mean, I know some people are stinkier than others, but. I don't know that there's any medical germ reason to that we need to bathe even once a day. Um, we use a lot of water. We use a lot of chemicals. Um, we use a lot of, you know, a lot of I think a lot, there's probably a little bit of a bathing industry. <laughs> you know, big, big shower wants to keep you showering because you're using all the stuff that you use in the shower. Um, you know, do we need to wash our hair every day? Do we need to do we really need to take a shower every day? Probably not. I mean, it's probably it's probably I mean, even the normal amount of bathing that we do in the United States of America is probably ex- is probably well ex- in excess of capacity of the need. So maybe um, I and don't I'm someone know. who does I mean, that, but I do, too. But, but I mean, I'm do you, do you like... really think there's going to be like do you really think there's going to be some sort of horrible you're going to be infested with germs like if you if you skipped a day of showering like and you're not a be... day yeah no definitely not a day i do think you can get clogged pores if you never wash your face yeah i mean yeah i feel like you have to wash your face and I, you should get I, like the dirt of the day off especially your face skin because i know if i'm outside doing yard work and stuff if i don't wash when i get in i've literally got like dirt on me but then there's also stuff that i don't even see like it's too small but it's just light dust on my skin i feel like you want to wash that off yeah i i well and here's the other thing i mean there are some people and i don't know that there's any science on this right um you know i definitely heard that there aren't that many recommendations about optimum amount of bathing for health because i do know you definitely can overwash and dry your skin out yeah well, I mean, you know, and there are people who like absolutely don't use shampoo or they use shampoo like shampoo and conditioner very rarely. They just like wash their hair with water and they insist that it's wonderful because it's sort of the, you know, the oils and the stuff. It sort of becomes self-regulating after a point. Um, yeah. So well, I don't. And that's one I'm kind of along the lines of one of those. I wash my hair as rarely as I can get away with it. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's I don't... one where I will come down. I'll be like, no, no, no. My hair will dry out in like two seconds yeah. if I wash it every day. I, I so I don't know if there's other stuff like that that becomes self-regulating if you don't do You know, if the fact that we do it makes it so we have to do it. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know because I haven't gone more than 24 hours, I think, in, right. in most of my life without you know, scrubbing down with soap and water, or if I just rinsed myself in the shower without any soap or chemicals, maybe that would be fine. Maybe it would be, I mean, on the other hand, I think there are, I, I don't know. And I'm entirely speculating here. I also have a feeling that there's stuff that, um, society would like of us that like, maybe, 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 maybe a lot less bathing would be okay in, in circumstances, but then you're going to stink. Yes. By our society standards of stink, which are not universal. 
<laughs> they're not, you know, st- kind of stinking is not. It's not necessarily a medical issue. It's just there's a certain way that we like to smell that mm-hmm. we expect people to smell. Um, so, you know, that's more of a social thing. I don't know. I, I, get, I, I There's the social thing. I've definitely read that if you scrub with like some kind of poof or washcloth that can be really good because um the exfoliating can knock off skin cells that could have the potential to be not great yeah and also just clearing dead skin cells is is good you don't want them hanging around i feel like but i feel okay but that doesn't mean daily shower i'm talking about these people who are saying now that they never bathe yeah. Like I mean, Ashton Kutcher is claiming that he cleans crevices, but he has never washed his forearm. Yeah, which is sort of weird. But I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I think that there are a lot of people in a lot of the world that um don't wash their forearms on a on a on a on a daily, weekly, or you know, regular basis. Um, and it's not like their forearms are overrun with dead skin. I mean, like I said, I think I think some of this stuff is is societal and i do wonder how much of it is self-regulating like if you took if you experimented with not bathing for a month i bet you'd stink but i bet it would not be as bad as you think it would be i bet you'd stink though that's the thing i bet you would stink which is not necessary again not necessarily a medical issue or that you're shedding germs or anything it's just that people aren't going to want to hang out with you but i don't know do people want to hang out with ashton kutcher anyway i don't know i mean well that's (laughs) the thing (laughs) I don't know. It it definitely did strike me as odd, this sudden trend of like, no, I never wash my children. Like, I think oh. it just yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's a trend of people like not washing. I think it just was something that came up and a couple other people chimed in and were like, hey, hey, I don't either. Um I don't know. The Ashton Kutcher thing is I mean, because it sounds like the other people were sort of saying, like, eh, I just don't shower every day you know is kind of what they were saying it sounds like a little bit i mean the ashton kutcher thing is weird it's like i never wash my i never wash my right. chest ever like he's never <laughs> like, washed his feet i'm assuming unless yeah. between the toes is considered a crevice but it seems it's it seems it seems like more work to like it really does like wash my crotch and like armpits that. without without just I if I'd like I could just get in the shower for the same amount of time and then yes yeah some water will get on my precious precious chest that I'm trying desperately to keep dry at all times but right. <laughs> I uh, yeah I weird. mean it definitely that struck me as odd um, yeah I don't know I don't think I can be the the person who experiments with your I'm not gonna shower for a month thing I tried like. I mean, I don't wash my hair every day. I tried like I was like, I'm not going to use shampoo anymore because I read some article that was like, oh, you shouldn't. I've shampoo. tried that, too. And then I, I gave up after not too long. But again, if I had gone longer, I think I. I guess my I guess my slight middle ground on this is I think we probably we probably overbathe in um, particularly in the United States, or at least we bathe more than is necessary. More than is strictly yeah, necessary. Yeah, we do, and, I and that know, includes I like hair washing and my hair. Mm-hmm. Yep. And back in the day, and this was wrong of me on a number of levels. People would say like, "You are overwashing your hair," and I'd be like, "No, it's gross not to wash it every day." Got to say, those people were right. Yeah, I was way overwashing my hair, and turns out like. The hair thing, I'll go to the mat on that. If mm. someone were like, you are gross because you don't wash your hair every day, I'd be like, no way, you are wrong. Shush. <laughs> Another white celebrity comes out in favor of not washing. Right. Heather's well, identity. Just because so many different people have so many different hair types and textures and processes and colors and styles and things that they're doing with them. And some styles can be washed, some can't. Some hair just if if it gets wet, like it's unmanageable and it's going to take hours to fix. Like I'm gonna, I'm all I'm gonna, about tending your hair however you want. I'm gonna try not washing my forearm for two months and see what happens. Yeah, see how it goes. See, I guess I you're wonder, gonna have to put a bag on it when you get you in the shower. T- I know, I know. It, it seems again, it's Ashton Kutcher. I'm just saying, it sounds like less. It would be less work just to get in the shower, but. Um, yeah, I sort of wonder because you talk about like, oh, the dead skin cells. Well, if you weren't drying out your skin by 
um, you know, pouring hot water over it and scrubbing it down with soap every day, maybe you wouldn't have so many dead skin cells. You know, I mean, I don't know. I, I just I I don't know. I I guess I guess where I'm. I guess my initial instinct when I was seeing some of this was like, that's gross. Why are you saying that? And then I was sort of like, eh, what do I care? <laughs> that's is kind of where I come down slightly. Like if that's your choice. I mean, if, if you're doing something that's unhealthy and causes unhealthy complications for other people, or if you just, you know, or if you just stink, I mean, that's, you know, I'm not saying that makes you a bad person if you stink. And you no. have and you have the luxury and the ability to, to wash. I mean, of course, there's there's you know, there's there's that angle with this, too. I, Ashley Kutcher, I assume has the resources to take a shower if you yes. want to, um, as did all those kids at the state school I went to for college when we all it was freshman year. We lived in the dorm. There were plenty of showers. It was a choice not to use them. They were free for us to use. Yeah. I mean, there is a. You know, there is a social expectation doesn't make you good or bad if you stink, but it does, you know, you, I guess you, I guess it does not hurt to think about whether you're making other people uncomfortable or creating an unpleasant environment for other people. There's nothing. Um, That's right, Mila. S- That's right, stink- Ashton. <laughs> Stinking doesn't make you a bad person, but it could make you a considerate person, an inconsiderate person, if you have the, you know, if you have the ability to take care of it. It could. I think another thing that struck me was I have heard <clears throat> that I haven't actually been around enough celebrities to know if this true. This is true. I've heard that often celebrities smell amazing. <laughs> that's a weird like, thing. To, that's a weird uh, observation, but okay. <laughs> no, like, like for like... real. I think it was Nicole Byer describing being near Beyonce, and Beyonce smelled like a dream. She just smelled like heaven. Well, I and think I've heard I th- this about other celebrities too that they smell great. Well, I mean, you can afford to, right? Like, <laughs> you can, you can, you don't have to. You know, you're not getting the preferred stock from the drugstore. You've got, you know, you have fancy perfumes and unguents and oils and people to rub them on you. And Seem, maybe that's it. Maybe these celebrities aren't washing because they're being rubbed down with unguents, right. unguents. <laughs> right. Maybe it's um. Maybe Ashton Kutcher. It's like the uh, the Romans of old, he just has himself smeared with oil and they scrape it off. I don't know. Yeah, that's maybe that's what so I'll do. Smooth. Yeah, I'll do that instead of showering. I'll I'll go to unguents.com <laughs> and order me up some unguents and I'll try those out. <laughs> that seems so much grosser. Again, I'm, it? I, I keep coming back to just going. I'm going to go ahead and take a shower. But it also seems like it would take a lot longer to have <laughs> to massage all those unguents in than just like hop in the shower and wash up. I mean, I do wonder as much as, you know, you, you get celebrities and I like all these people. I mean, I like I love Christian Bell. I love Jake Me Gyllenhaal. Too. She's Ashton funny. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. I don't have strong feelings about either way, but I think they're fine. They're like, fun. I don't have any I don't have any issue with them. Um, you know, but you sort of get this celebrity stuff where I feel like this sort of goes around in these closed little celebrity circles. And of course, if you're if you're a rich celebrity, no one's going to be like there are very few people who are going to be like, no, you're wrong. You should absolutely take a bath. You smell really bad. <laughs> you know, you you don't get I feel like sometimes and I would be totally, you know, you know, please, please, God, let me have to be vulnerable this to this someday where I'd be a rich, wealthy celebrity that, you know, I'd have to seek out people to tell me the truth. But, you know, yeah, you, you I feel like you can be the, the 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 nicest person in the world and still be sort of vulnerable to being in a situation where people don't tell you things because you're yeah. a rich, wealthy, powerful person. So I feel like sometimes these when you get these celebrity sort of, and I don't know if this is a trend or just a few people who, you know, are saying the same thing, but you get these celebrity trends sometimes. And I think these things go around and then nobody's like, that's really stupid. You know, <laughs> like nobody wants to, <laughs> there's, there, there, there are so few people in your life, especially if you're, if your spouse or partner are doing the same thing. Well, that's the like, thing who's going to be the one Mila to would tell... listen to Ashton or vice right. versa. But if they're right. both like, Hey, we've, she does a, she does her face. I do my crevices. The kids, I don't know. When we see the dirt on them, <laughs> right? So you know some of the, some of that stuff. You you hear celebrities talk about this stuff, and 
you know, you're sort of like, that's nice for you. But I'm 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 not taking that as important advice for me because <laughs> I think it I'm sounds definitely kinda... taking their advice on raising babies. Yes. Wash them when they stink. Don't wash them. Don't that's wash right. Them. But I mean, you know, yep. babies, I don't know. We don't have to talk about this anymore. But babies, nah. you know, babies, I, I don't think, know anything um, about it. I don't know a thing about babies, but, you know, you do feel like maybe there's I don't know what the recommendations like my dogs. I'm not supposed to wash that often because it's bad for their skin or their fur or something. Same, so I don't know. Maybe yeah, babies are like dogs. Are babies analogous to dogs? You weren't supposed to wash them. Yeah, they are. Yeah. The same as pets. OK. Yeah. You definitely aren't supposed to wash ferrets too often because you'll strip their oils out of their fur and then they'll get real itchy. So maybe we're stripping the oils out of our skin by bathing every day. And maybe we are. I mean, you think about like, like I said, Unguent.com. <laughs> Unguent.com. This is a dumb conversation, so I'll stop. But <laughs> it's so fun. You know, think about like shampoo and conditioner, which I always think about like, okay, so I <laughs> so I get in the shower and I put in this shampoo that is the goal is to strip all the oil and moisture of any kind away from my hair. And then I put on conditioner, the goal of which is to like restore the oil and the can. Sometimes I'll wash my hair and I'm like, this is really stupid. <laughs> yeah, what are you using on your hair that it's stripping all of the oil and moisture? But that's the point of shampoo. That's the whole point of shampoo is to strip away all the oil. It's supposed to get dirt. It's not just supposed to get what if, if it was just dirt, you can get water. You don't need you don't need soap or shampoo oh. to get rid of oil. Water will get rid of dirt just 100% fine. You don't need, if you've just got dirt and you're not trying to get rid of oil, you need zero soap. <laughs> hmm. The I whole don't know. point Maybe. of soap. We, we have talked about this with COVID. We, we learned all about what soap does. But that's soap. That's like soap made by saponification. Which is, like, which I is. I think my shampoo is not actually soap. Okay. I, <laughs> well, you. I'm going to, you're going to have to take my word for read the label on that. You're going to have to take my word for, <laughs> word for this, that shampoo well, you does know, more I than water. Weird stuff, right? <laughs> it's, it's true, but I don't know I what. I mean, I got some fancy shampoo. If you just have there. dirt, <laughs> you don't need shampoo. I do. Look at that. It's terrible. Do you want to? <laughs> All right. So maybe <laughs> I'll try not this. washing my hair for a while. All right. It sounds like you were going to do that anyway, though. So this doesn't seem like a big problem for you. <laughs> Well, by a while, I'm like a month. I'm. This is why I'm not touching your hair. I'm not sure I can do it. I'm not sure I can. See, the problem with me is that I work out so much that I usually sweat my hair like three or four inches into the roots. That doesn't seem right. That can't so be really, good for it, can it? I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You got, I'll Google you got that later when I'm looking out. for unguins.com. <laughs> Heather, you want to do some hot picks? Let's get off this topic. This is a dumb. Oh topic. my god, let's do some hot picks. My I shampoo. Love... <laughs> so shampoo, that's what you're going with? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh my god, I lost my note and I forgot my hot pick. What was it? <laughs> Why don't oh, you do one? You had one. Yeah, I'll definitely do one. So on your recommendation. What the heck was my hot pick? Where's my notes? Um, I have no idea. This Look is for the your dumbest... notes. I will. Okay. Go ahead. I'll 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 cover. So on your recommendation, I started watching Kung Fu on the CW network and wow, it's great. I'm like super duper enjoying the story. I'm very much enjoying the character development. I they they actually got me with like an unexpected twist. Ooh. Like they've been tugging at my heartstrings. I am very invested in the characters and their stories and I want things to like work out right for them. Everything about the show is great so far. Yeah, it's really I mean, it's you know, it's um, yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you accepted my recommendation. It's um, yeah, it's very, you know, on one level, it's very YA, which is perfectly fine. But it um, yeah, it's it's a it's a uh, it's fun and exciting and, and sort of delightful. And it's nice to see, you know, especially with all the. I'll just bring this back and make it a sound of tomorrow thing, Um, Mm. especially with all the, you know, the Asian, the API violence we're seeing, uh, the Asian American Pacific Islander violence we're seeing and all that sort of stuff. And the, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the scapegoating about COVID and all that sort of stuff of anyone who looks vaguely Asian of Mm -hmm. any Mm -hmm. nationality or extraction. Um, right. It's sort of it's sort of good timing too to have a show that is almost entirely Asian American characters and an Asian American family. That's um, 
you know, right. And, and, and in a, in a semi superhero kind of context. So it's, you know, good, good role models and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And they even covered some of that, like addressing specifically the anti-Asian hate that's going on right now. Do you remember? It was just a little segment, but I was so impressed because it was so like they do keep putting in all kinds of social justice messages that Mm -hmm. I love, but I also love that they're not like the sound of tomorrow where they're just like hammering you over (laughs) the head over and over again until you're annoyed and you just switch it off. Like it seems it's totally realistic. Like the scene I'm thinking of is the mom and dad are buying groceries at the local Asian grocery store and they're like, oh, the prices. And then I think it's the dad who's like, oh, we should go to the bigger discount mart. And then the mom's like, no, we can't. It's not safe. This is safe. We can walk here. We can go together. It's in our neighborhood. And just addressing how it's not safe for them to go out of their neighborhood to the big box store. And as I recall, that's just, pretty much <laughs> 10 minutes into the, the first episode. Was that the only reference? So, no, no, I think that was no. about 10 minutes into the first episode. So I see how far you've gotten. I thought it was more recent than that. No, I just got <laughs> done with, um, well, I don't know. I don't want to do any spoilers. Yeah, you bet. You I think I'm on. about six episodes in. All right. No, it's a, so, it's a, it's, it's a very, um, um, yeah, no, it's very good. I, I wasn't that interested, uh, but, you know, Mike was. And I'm glad because yeah. it's, 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 you know, and it, and it's, again, it's one of those, it, it's sort of a, you know, a YA sort you know, on one level, it's definitely sort of a YA action superhero kind of show. So it's got some of that silliness oh. to it. So you have to kind of be, you know, oh, you kind of yeah. have to be in that mindset, but um, I think it's, I think it's really well done on that, on that. And, and I'm not minimizing it for that reason. It's just, you know, cause I like that sort of thing, <laughs> but. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's fun because there are all the elements you want from an action thing, like the big fight scene. There's like at least one big fight scene every yeah. episode. But there's also like a lot of cool storytelling, I think. Yeah, and I love the family and, and all that. So yeah, yeah it's good. I remembered my thing yep. now. I want to hear it. <laughs> yes, I do, because I'm okay. done with my hot pick. Okay, so my hot pick is let's talk to Lucy. <laughs> this is very Let's talk to Lucy. Let's talk to Lucy. So there so this is a there are a couple ways to to get this, but this was basically the um, the the Arnez family apparently pulled out. Uh, Lucille Ball had had a radio show in the '60s, it's uh, like mid late '60s, something like that. That sort of, I don't know. The tapes were, I guess it it, it sounds like it sounds like the tapes were like in the attic <laughs> at home, and like they they had just they had never been rebroadcast. They were never available anywhere. So. Um, Sirius XM is doing a, so they, they pulled out these tapes, um, the, the Arnez family and, uh, Sirius XM is doing a, for a, for a whole month, they've got a pop-up channel that is nothing but this show. And, um, they've also, but, but there's also a podcast, so you can, where they're doing like an episode a week. So you can, if you, you know, if you don't, if you're not a Sirius XM subscriber, you can get the show on, uh, on, uh, you know, just a regular pot, any regular podcast feed. But it's so it's really fun. They they were saying they were advertising it as like, did you know Lucille Ball had a podcast before podcasts were a thing? And I was sort of like, OK, well, that's sort of dumb because mm, just because you're putting right. it out as a podcast. But it's yeah, it's a radio show. but it kind of feels like a podcast. Wow. <laughs> um, it's because it's it's very um, it's it's a lot of. It's a lot of celebrities that you. Probably know. I mean, I mean, it, I guess it depends how like into, you know, I'm probably more into that stuff than a lot of people. But I think I think in, you know, in old timey times, there were fewer channels, there were fewer movies, there were fewer mm-hmm. things. So I think big stars were bigger for longer. So I think there, are, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. any random celebrity that Lucille Ball was going to talk to in 1966, there's a fairly good chance that you might know who that is or you might remember, you know, if it's like, you know, oh. you know, if she's talking to Frank Sinatra or Carol Burnett or you might have you, seen him on Hollywood squares when you were young. Well, I mean, I mean, they're big. I mean, for, for you know, a lot of them are big stars. Like, you know, again, like a Carol Burnett, a Frank Sinatra. I know, like if it's really Frank Sinatra. Um, yeah. So. Whereas I feel like if you did something like that today, if you pulled up a random radio show in 50 years from now with you'd be like, little Nas X, what? <laughs> who's, who's yeah, that? you know, it's and I think it's just because there's so much media. I think it's 
mm-hmm. it's really hard. You know, you might know, you know, you'd probably remember Beyonce, but you wouldn't remember a million other people just because. Right. It, it st- you know, stuff comes and goes so much faster. Um, well, but and there, like you said, there is so much of it and so many ways to get it. Yeah. So, I mean, so it's fun in that regard. It's like Lucille Ball talking to other wow. famous people that you sort of know. And um, and even when it's not, even when there are people where I'm sort of like, who's that? It's just it's a like I said, it feels sort of podcasty because it's very. Oh, my gosh. I don't think I don't think Lucille Ball was ever. I think she was. I don't want to say it was. I don't I don't want to say they're loose as in sloppy, but they're very like loose, chatty conversations. And some of the episodes are just like a, a few of the episodes we've heard. This is you know, we've had this sort of on in the car whenever we go anywhere. <laughs> so we're just hearing random little bits and pieces. But, a, you know, a couple of the episodes are just like, this is what I do on my vacation. And Mike, who's not as into stuff like that as I am, was like, he was just like, this is wonderful. <laughs> it's just their fun little um, sometimes they're really in depth. Sometimes they're they just sort of have a conversation that goes anywhere. The one I was listening to, I forget who she was talking to, but she was just like, oh, my God, tell me about your you bought this house. Tell me about this house. Tell me about your house. How many store? How many rooms does it have? Really? And, the, you know, and it's just sort of the kind of thing where you're like, um, it's two people chatting. And again, sometimes they get very um, sometimes they get into very heavy topics, but a lot of times it's just two people having a pretty friendly conversation. It's very, they're, they're fun. And it is sort of podcasty. Wow. Like I get yeah. what they're talking about because it's it doesn't feel, it's not sloppy because I don't think Lucille Ball was ever anybody who did anything, you know, <laughs> without having it pretty nailed down. Mm-hmm. But it's not, you know, it's not super structured like you're you're used to in an interview show especially in an interview show of that vintage where it's like okay well i'm the host right. and we're gonna talk to blah 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 it's just it feels like people chatting and in some cases you know at the time i realized from listening to a couple like oh okay she's <laughs> okay she's this person's boss so they're <laughs> they're talking on that level <laughs> um but it's it's they're really fun i don't know i mean i don't know if you have to be into you know, 60s culture and Lucille Ball to appreciate it. Maybe you do. But like I said, Mike is not as much into that stuff nearly as I am. And he was like, he was really getting it like, like these are wonderful, fascinating, you know, little pieces of pop culture, just history. And but the conversations are, I don't know, they just they feel like they're going on right now. I mean, they just it doesn't feel. Yeah. Except for the topics. It doesn't feel you don't feel like you're listening to a time capsule entirely. So I don't know. I think it's super fun. That sounds really neat. So Let's if I Lucy. wanted to listen to it, I would need need to get Sirius XM. No. Do you listen to me at all? Do you ever hear? A, no, have you ever heard all, a never. word I've said? Where can I get it? It's a podcast. Where can I get it? Podcast. Oh, it's just a regular Did I like, say podcast, podcast like anywhere. 18 times? Yeah. No, it's on. See, so it's so Sirius XM is producing the. Gotcha. We release. So they've got a channel on Sirius XM that just plays this show. But. I understand, but I can also seriously, like for real, I can just get it in my podcatcher of choice. Yeah, like if you want to listen to cool. random episodes all the time, 24 hours a day, then yes, you need to get Sirius XM. But if you but okay. you're doing, I think there's only one episode out right now as a podcast because they're, I think they're doing all like right. one a week, but that's all right. Interesting. Maybe I'll subscribe though. Um, I'm not Carol really Channing. Sure. Carol Channing's in the first one. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yep. Oh, my gosh. I bet that's really good. Oh, no. But if I add another podcast, I'm going to be, be so behind. All right. This is every time. I've never. I don't know how you. No, I'm just, it's just bad. You can't ever it's do a hot, t- hot pick without you. <laughs> without me doing what? I'm like, I'm like, oh, you know what's good? Cheese. And you're like, oh, you know what? I have too many foods. I'm sorry. I can't absorb <laughs> any more foods right now. Sorry. It's too much. It's too much. <laughs> All right. All right. I don't know if these qualify as hot picks. We might have just closed that segment. But I want to know if you want to hear about car hacks. Sure. So I was actually a little bit excited. It was another, I don't know, I've started doing this thing. It happens every once so often where I'm really into clickbait. And I like to read lists. And I like to go to like BuzzFeed things of the funniest tweets of the week. I don't know. It's fine. My brain's not okay. Never no. said it was. Right. But I got a couple of little car hacks off of one of these sites. I don't even know. I didn't I didn't cite my sources. I thought these were so good. So this one is of the tips um they had. So I guess I guess we need to I guess it's important to clarify that you should probably not do any of these things without verifying from what you're saying, it sounds like. <laughs> no, no, no. These are very simple things about making the interior of your car just more comfortable. 
you know what? Just save your battery life by just hooking up one of the ends on the battery. Yeah, no. I saw that. I don't know if that's no, true. No, these or not, are way simpler. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the first tip you can actually is... lick. <laughs> you can actually lick your you the oil thing clean uh, before you, you put it back in. That's true. It's good yep. for you. It's good sure. for your coat. Sure. Um. No. 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 This is like the first one I have is. You know how you want to keep an umbrella in your car, but if you have it on the floor, it like rolls all over the place. Yes. Sometimes oh my gosh. you don't have like the pouch thing in the side of your door where it fits really well. Right. Take a carabiner hook and put it on the metal support of the headrest and hang the umbrella down the back of the seat. Oh, no. No, that's going to rattle. Why not? No, I'm not going to like that. I'm not going to like that. Oh, it's no. not going to rattle? It's going to be rattle. fine. So speaking of things that rattle. <laughs> These are nightmares so far. I do not yet. <laughs> I've only had one. Only one. Well, um, it's 100% nightmare so far. <laughs> I have found that things love to roll around my trunk because I don't have a cargo net yet and I don't have like cargo carriers. I can get a laundry basket and use that as a trunk caddy. Like a, what kind of a laundry basket? Like a plastic laundry oh, basket. Oh, like a plastic laundry basket. Okay, sure. Like just, I don't know, from dollar store? Right. And that way, my groceries won't roll all around the trunk. I mean, I get a lot of groceries sometimes, so I'd probably need one or two of them. But I may really try that, though I am such cheapskate. I obtained a relatively large cardboard box recently. So right now I have that in the trunk just to keep things from rolling all over the place. It's driving me up a tree. I think that's all you need. Another thing I don't like is when my cup holders get dirty and it's hard to clean them. This site suggested you put silicon cupcake cups in your cupcake ho- in your cup holders. Hmm. And then you can just remove those, take them in the house, wash them, and bring them back out. Instead of trying to get like the vacuum in there and then you're trying to get like the cloth with the Windex. Maybe. I feel like stuff's gonna get under those those and you're gonna be back in the same situation. But not a bad one. I'll mm-hmm. give you that's less than a bad than- one. Not a bad and I I'm like sorry. this I'm one. To, I'm not trying to poo on all your car hacks. <laughs> See, this this is like you. This is like I am when you try to do a hot pick. I've got two yeah. more. All right. In the wintertime, if you live in a place like Rochester, New York, where you get a lot of ice and snow, if you put great big Ziploc bags on your side mirrors, it'll keep them ice free. You just take the icy bags off and your mirrors are protected. Huh. I have definitely been in scenarios where my mirrors ice up and I'm like, oh, this is, huh. Yeah. Well, I, huh. Because it's not like the defrost will get them because they're outside. Yeah. Interesting. I really liked that one. I'm not sure I'm going to remember every day to put baggies on my side mirrors, but I hope I remember it. And then there's a tip. A lot of trunks have little places where you can put a bungee cord this this site was pretty bungee cord heavy (laughs) bungee cord your paper towels onto your trunk roof so that they're not rolling all over your trunk getting all dirty and unspooly and stuff oh you mean like the paper towels that you would keep in your car yeah because a lot of people keep paper towels in the car just because sometimes you just really need a paper towel yeah it's a good idea couldn't you put the paper towels in the box you could, but okay. then if your box is all full of the things that live in your car, you're not going to be able to put your groceries in it. Well, you should get two boxes, don't you think? I think you should. I definitely need to do the thing where I get the box of things that live in my car, like a good pair of walking shoes, a light jacket, because I've already got like the, the essentials, like a flashlight and an umbrella. I've already got my snow brush and stuff, but I need to get a few more things to live in my car. Yeah. What lives like a, in your car? Like a squirrel. Oh, I don't know. I have a, I have a, I have like a trunk caddy and it's got, <laughs> I put anything car related in there and it's some of it's, I think I've got atlases. <laughs> like, as if yeah. I'm going to pull out a road atlas. <laughs> as if that know, will ever just... happen. Um, but yeah, this stuff, I've got just... like the, the emergency kit and the weird, the random, you know, the flashlight and the, but I guess a good car hack would be to check that stuff once in a while, because as I'm saying this, yeah. like, does that flashlight work right now at the present time? Probably not, because it's been in there for about I 10 do, years. 
I do check mine. However, my thing is the quart of oil that my dad gave me, like when I had my first car and he was like, always keep a quart of oil in the trunk in case you need it. But I'll tell you, that's vintage oil from the 90s. Yeah. I don't think that works. And I don't, I think the scenarios, I mean, like you have, you have a newer car we've I'll, learned. Yes. I think that's not a secret. Um, no, I mentioned it on the show. I, I, I don't know that you're ever going to need that quart of oil. <laughs> I don't know that you're well, ever, ever going to need that quart of oil. I mean, I'm awfully glad my dad was giving me a lot of credit, but I don't know. I've got to tell you there when it comes to cars, I am useless, like useless. So there is the question, like, what did he think I was going to do with that quart of oil? Well, I mean, it is, it assumes a very specific problem, I guess, which is that you would have. Yeah. Like you need to put the quart of oil in to get your car home. Yeah. Like that you had an oil leak and all your oil leaked out. Yeah. And you, I mean, which is possible, but it's pretty specific. (laughs) Very (laughs) specific. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can uh, snow brush. I'm good. I'm good. I got yeah, a snow brush. brush. Yeah, I think I have a tire I have... inflator thingamabobby. You got a tire inflator thingamabobby? Little uh, compressor jobber? Yeah. Okay. Well, then now I know what I'm not getting you for your birthday next year. I mean, does it work? I have no idea because it's been my car for oh, 10 works. years. Oh, no, yeah. It's, mine, un- mine it's is... under an atlas. <laughs> so <laughs> it's under a road atlas. Um, because I thought, I guess I, <laughs> well, I might as well stick this in my car because otherwise I'm throwing it away. <laughs> yeah. Because what am I going to do with Listeners, a robot? Space cadets, we want to know what you keep in your trunks, what lives in your car. Please drop us a line at jimmyspaceboy at gmail.com if you want to share that information with us. For now, thank goodness, at long last, <laughs> the show you've been waiting for is coming right up. It's Music Matters in just a few minutes right here on WAYO LP Rochester. Thanks for tuning in. It's interesting how your gay origin story is just that you watched a lot of He-Man. I mean, well, and G.I. Joe, too. I mean, I guess I can kind of relate. I'm not sure my sexuality was really locked in until I started watching Smurfs. Really? Why Smurfs? Oh, I just want, I just really wanted to be Smurfette, you know, getting my pick of an entire village worth of men with no competition whatsoever. Wow. Sexuality is so complex. Agreed. Yeah. I'm going to call you Smurfette. Do. I really wanted to be her. I know. (laughs) She's pretty. She's so pretty.